With the fundamentals of frames, stacks, and layout down, we're ready to add some content to our pages. Images, videos, and text are really the name of the game. Great content combined with great layout gets us pretty darn far in designing great sites. So let's take a look at how to add this stuff to our pages and some of the properties that come with it. Let's start by adding some images. There are several ways to get an image on the canvas. So I'll show you a few and you can use whichever one works best for you. You might be familiar with the first way, which is to just drag and drop an image file from your computer directly onto the frame or canvas. What we get is really just a frame with an image fill, which is really no different from drawing a frame, adding a fill set to image, and choosing which image we want, either by browsing or dragging an image file directly into this box. You can also use plugins to grab images from sources like Lumi and Unsplash. If you know you're creating a frame that you'll eventually fill with an image, you can also head to the layout menu on the toolbar and choose image. This will let us draw a frame with a placeholder image fill in one step. Then when we're ready, we can add our own image in the fill properties. One cool advantage to the first method of dragging and dropping an image file directly onto the canvas is that Framer remembers the original or intrinsic size of the image, which means we can quickly get back to the actual dimensions of this asset by right-clicking and choosing intrinsic size. While we're talking about actual assets and size, let's talk file formats for a sec because Framer supports a wide range of them. For raster images, we have JPEG, PNG, WebP, GIF, or GIF, whatever you want, TIFF, and AVIF. And for vector graphics, of course, SVG. One of the massive favors that Framer does for us automatically is optimizing our images for the web, converting them to efficient formats while keeping the quality high when our site is published. In the properties of an image fill, we get some options for resolution, but we recommend leaving this on auto. Quite a bit happens behind the scenes, but the TLDR is that Framer will automatically convert most images to AVIF and downscale them to match the width on the site and the screen resolution that they're being displayed on. If you want to nerd out on more of the details, we have a great article on Framer.com that I'll link to below. Back to the image properties. We also get to change the way the image fits within the frame, which should be familiar to you from Figma and Sketch. When the frame becomes different proportions than the image that's filling it, it's important to choose how the image is positioned within the frame. Let's look at an example where I have a photo of this handsome young man set to fill this frame. If the frame gets shorter or wider, that really great haircut will get cut off. And eventually, those beautiful brown eyes. We can try changing the position of the image from center to perhaps top center, but that isn't much better. This is where my favorite position mode comes in, focal point. If I choose focal point, I get a modal where I can click and drag to place this dot on the most important point of the image, which in portraits is typically the nearest eye. Now, as the image scales and repositions to fill the frame, we pretty much always end up with an acceptable composition. In addition to images, we can also add video to our sites by either embedding a third-party player, like YouTube, or directly embedding an MP4 file. Let's talk MP4 files first. Similar to images, we can drag them directly onto the canvas or add a video frame from the layout menu and either paste the URL of a hosted MP4 file or choose upload to add a video file from our own computer. Depending on your site plan, you may run into file size limits when adding a video file directly to Framer. Videos get pretty big which is one of the reasons you might want to host large videos elsewhere, or perhaps embed from a dedicated video hosting platform like Vimeo or YouTube, which offloads the burden of hosting, buffering, adapting, and streaming to content platforms that are built for it. That way our viewers will always get quality that's optimized for their device and connection speed. We'll find YouTube and Vimeo components in the insert panel under the media category, and we can click or click and drag them directly to the canvas. Then it's just a matter of pasting in the URL of your video. Done deal. All right, now let's talk text. We can add text to the canvas using the text tool on the toolbar or by pressing the letter T on the keyboard. Then we can either click to create a text box that automatically resizes to fit the content, perfect for things like headings, 
or we can click and drag to create a fixed width text box that keeps the content confined within its bounds. If you want your text box to stick around, be sure to type something or paste some text in there. An empty text box will disappear automatically. A text box itself is very similar to a frame. It has its own size and position properties in addition to the properties of the text within it. You can adjust the box's width and height manually in the properties panel or toggle between these handy grow presets to choose between auto width and height, auto height with a fixed width, or fixed height and width. One last little trick before we wrap up. If you double click on an empty frame, you'll get a new text box centered in the frame automatically. Pretty sweet for labeling buttons or tags. We're gonna tackle formatting frames and text in another lesson, but for now these basics should get you started with getting content onto the canvas in the first place. The rest is icing on the cake. I'll see you in the next one.